Building muscle is not easy, but newbie gains are real. Newbie gains are the gains that you get when you first start working out. And this can happen whether you are 10 years old or whether you're 60 years old or 80 years old. When you first start working out and you are quote unquote for the sake of this video in scientific literature untrained, an untrained individual can build muscle relatively easy without a lot of intensity. But what I really wanna focus on with this video is not just about building muscle. It's more about how much do you need to do to simply maintain. Okay, there are a lot of people that put on even a moderate amount of muscle mass in their 30s, maybe their 20s, maybe in their 40s, and then they're like, okay, well, how do I maintain this? What's the minimum amount of work I need to do to maintain my physique, maintain my muscle mass? Candidly, I even ask myself that question sometimes. Like, if I wanna do other things, I wanna go run, I wanna go climb mountains, I wanna do this, I'm like, okay, what's the minimum that I need to do to maintain the size that I have now and maintain the strength that I have now? Well, to understand that we do have to look at the full picture. We're gonna cover supplementation, we're gonna cover nutrition, we're gonna cover some of my interview with Dr. Andy Galpin to really get some more pieces here. So it's fairly comprehensive, but you'll have a good answer. So there's a study that was published in the Frontiers of Physiology, first and foremost, found that in untrained sort of newbie gains, you don't have to train to a high intensity to build much muscle. But if someone is trained, and it doesn't even have to be heavily trained, if someone has experience and has already worked out before, they have to get closer and closer and closer to high intensity or to failure to be able to maintain or especially to build. So in essence, the more trained you are, the more you have to get close to failure. So if you take someone fresh off the street, you could make them work out at like a 50% intensity. Just picking up some barbells will probably put some muscle on them. That's a newbie gain thing and it's real. Okay, now if you took someone even like myself, I've been training for a long time, I have to go close to failure to elicit a response. But that's not why you're here. You're not here about building muscle. You're more so concerned with, okay, once I do build it, how do I be the mouse that gets to keep all my cheese, right? I don't wanna lose it. We have to look at volume, we have to look at intensity, like how much overall work do we need to do? Well, we've established based on a lot of the literature that training to failure and intensity is probably more important than volume for maintaining. But don't worry, we will cover volume, we'll talk about it. But do you wanna to train to quote unquote failure or close to failure at 100 reps or at five reps or at 10 reps, right? Like if you're, if you're 50 years old, 60 years old, training to failure at five reps sounds pretty scary. That'd be really heavy weight. So maybe training to failure at like 20 reps seems more reasonable, right? The point is we need to get to failure or close to failure for the adequate stimulus, especially as we get a little bit older. But what does that look like? What does the literature actually say? Well, the bottom line is that the literature is not clear on the volume with intensity. It seems as though all that matters, and this is kind of cool, is the intensity. But there's some things to consider, okay? If you are doing lighter loads all the way to failure, you might not be recruiting some of the motor units that are gonna allow you to like recruit more muscle mass. So there is an argument that you should be maybe reaching some higher intensities or closer to failure with moderately heavy weights. Okay, like somewhere in the 10 to 12 rep range. But weight is relative. If you can't do the weight because you hurt, as long as you're getting to failure another way, you're gonna be in decent shape for maintaining. The other thing we do have to consider is that if you're doing higher repetitions, those higher repetitions can fatigue you so the subsequent sets might not have the intensity that you really need to have. Does that make sense? So it's like you wanna maintain that intensity, but if you're going so high rep that you're fatiguing metabolically, then you're following sets, you're not gonna be able to go to that same intensity, so you might not get the same maintenance effect. Now for building muscle, just so you have some context, most of the literature, and this is something that I talked about with Dr. Andy Galpin as well, suggests that you need to have probably about 20 to 30 working sets per muscle group per week to grow. Okay, so growth takes a lot more than say maintaining, but we're gonna talk about exactly how much you need to maintain in just a second. Regarding maintaining, there's a study that was published in the journal Strength and Conditioning Research, and I'm gonna read you an excerpt from that. 
Available scientific evidence indicates that the minimal amount of exercise needed to maintain physical performance may be lower than one might assume. Bottom line with that is we don't need much to maintain. But what does that really look like? Let's start with frequency for just a second. Frequency is how often do you go to the gym? And I think you're gonna find this to be really, really good news. For people that are between the ages of 20 to 35, one to two sessions of strength training per week at five to 10 sets per muscle group is all it seems like you need. So what does that look like? Now this again is for ages 20 to 35 roughly. That would mean going into the gym on maybe Monday and Thursday, two days a week, and doing five sets per exercise, like five sets per muscle group. So five sets of shoulder press, five sets of squats, five sets of chest press, five sets of rows, five sets of bicep curls, five sets of tricep pushdowns. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, done. Do it again Thursday. That's all you would really need to maintain. You could get that done in 30 minutes. If you were moving quick, you could get that done in 30 minutes. If you were trying to like go a little heavier, maybe it's gonna be more like 45 to 60 minutes with the adequate rest in between. But that's really good news because you don't need to be in the gym six days a week. Look, once the mass is built, you can get away with twice per week. Now, the more trained that you are, there is an argument that the higher you would have to train, or the higher intensity you'd have to train, and possibly the higher volume. The big important caveat with this, though, is that people over 35, especially people over 50, they required more. So people 20 to 35, they were able to get away with the two sessions per week with that total volume. Whereas it seemed like people that were older were not maintaining on that volume. They needed more. And this is interesting because I talked to Dr. Andy Galpin and I've also talked to Dr. Peter Atia about this. And it's something that they've mentioned is that muscle protein synthesis, you need more protein as you get older because you're less sensitive to the muscle protein synthesis. So it would also make sense that you need more stimulus on the weight training side. It's become common knowledge that as we get older, to maintain muscle, you need more and more and more protein as you get older because you're less efficient. So the same thing applies with the strength training. And we're gonna come back to this because it puts us in a little bit of a conundrum. Because as we get older, we're told that we should reduce our volume because we don't wanna wear our bodies down. We wanna find that minimum effective dose. But on the other hand, we need to train enough to not lose muscle mass. So we'll talk about that in a second. With intensity, this is where it gets wild because we actually don't have a ton of data. All that we really have to measure what your intensity should be is something called maximum voluntary contraction. Okay, and this was an interesting study because it basically took students, in this case, they were younger, and they said, okay, we're gonna have these trained students do isometric voluntary contractions. When they did 50% of their intensity with voluntary contractions, isometrics, they did not maintain muscle, they lost size. But when they did 100% intensity, they did maintain. So that's it, we have 50% doesn't maintain, 100% does maintain. But what it does give us is a relative data point to tell us that intensity is clearly important. So the lower the volume, the higher intensity, you could be fine, right? So as you're maintaining muscle, if you can increase your intensity, then you can probably be okay with a little less volume. But wait, there's more. There's a study that was published in the American College of Sports Medicine. And this was interesting because they had subjects go for 16 weeks at three days per week Three, uh, three sets per exercise within that session. So three sessions with three sets per exercise for 16 weeks. Okay, that was basically their gaining phase. And then they had them go into this maintenance phase where for 32 weeks, they went down to two sessions per week, but with one set per exercise. So two sessions, now only one set when it comes down to the body parts. What they found is that they were actually able to maintain quite well on that volume. So people that were, again, 20 to 35 years old were able to maintain with the two sessions with the one set. But the downside was the older populations did not maintain. People over 35 did not maintain on two sessions with just one set per exercise. But we've kind of established previously that you need a little more. Like, Two sessions is fine, but you really need to be more like the three to five sort of range of sets per exercise each workout. But bottom line is that if you're 35 or younger, 
you can really get away with super minimal amounts. That's really, really good news. What these papers did not look at, something that's really, really important, they didn't look at nutrition or supplementation, okay? So let's talk about this for a second. The three biggest stimulus for muscle growth and maintenance, number one is the stimulus, number two is the protein, number three is the calories in that order, okay? So we've tackled the stimulus side, but maybe you're not getting quite enough stimulus. You know how you would offset that? Increase your protein intake. So if you're over the age of 35, for every little bit of volume that you decrease your workout, you should increase your protein. It sounds crazy because it's almost like I should increase my protein because I increased my workout. It's actually kind of the opposite. I mean, not entirely the opposite, but the more that you decrease your training, you need to be extra certain that you're increasing your protein. So if you train five days a week this month and next month you plan to go down to two days per week, you should probably increase your protein another 10 or 15, maybe even 20% to offset less of the stimulus. So especially as you get older, this becomes really, really important. Now there's also a lot of literature surrounding creatine for older people. Creatine in general, just for flat out muscle preservation, there's some benefits there. Because you're able to achieve those intensities a little bit easier than you ordinarily would be able to without creatine supplementation. Creatine is one of the most studied ergogenic aids that is out there, and it comes down to, bottom line, being able to produce energy and ultimately being able to lift at a higher intensity and more weight, create more leverage, and potentially increase muscle protein synthesis. So I would recommend people that are over the age of 35 probably have anywhere from three to 10 grams of creatine per day. I put a link down below for Create Creatine Gummies, which is the creatine that I personally use. They are allulose sweetened gummies. So really interesting stuff. So they're not using sugar, they're using allulose, which is interesting and cool in and of itself. But there's one and a half grams of creatine monohydrate per gummy. So you can sort of low dose throughout the day, potentially reducing some of the water retention that might come if you were to just take a big bolus of it. So these things are awesome and that is a 50% off discount link. So again, 50% off create creatine gummies and they've got four awesome flavors. They've got blue raspberry, they've got watermelon, they've got their orange and now they have sour apple. And again, they're not sweetened with sugar, they're sweetened with allulose. So one and a half grams of creatine makes it real easy to dose throughout the day. So that link is down below. Use that link and that code for 50% off. There was another study that was published in the European Journal of Sports Science. Okay, this one was cool because it looked at reducing intensity or reducing volume, excuse me, but slightly different from the previous study. So remember the last study went from three sets down to one set, pretty significant reduction in volume. This one went from doing four sets down to two sets. So we're still starting out eight weeks, three sessions per week, four sets per exercise. Then they went down to a maintenance phase at eight weeks with two sessions per week, two sets per exercise. At this rate, mass was maintained and strength was maintained across most age groups. So it seems as though the sweet spot is going to be in that two to four sets per exercise. So it comes right back to what I had mentioned before. If maintenance is your goal, two days per week, hitting anywhere from two to five sets per exercise. But you need to make sure that you're getting those sets at least to 80% of your maximum intensity. And that's where you can kind of play with it a little bit. Do you go heavy? Do you go light? But let's talk about older population for just a second as well, because as you get older, this is something you need to be aware of. There was a study published in the journals of gerontology. Now this was looking at older people by far. It was looking at people that were 70, but it demonstrated a lot. It demonstrated that basically, as long as they were getting to 80% of failure, they were able to maintain their mass. And they did this in isolation with like knee extension exercises, which isn't always directly applicable to real life because people don't just go in and do leg extensions. But when you're older, you're probably not training at a high intensity. And that ends up being the bigger problem. And when you start poking holes at these other studies, you realize, well, were we really controlling for intensity? Were we really controlling? Because like, we weren't always looking at their one rep max and training to a percentage of their one rep max. 
So a lot of times with these older people, it was subjective. Where's your failure? Oh, I hurt, I'm gonna stop now. But you're not actually training to that true muscle fatigue. Now I wanna reference something from Dr. Andy Galpin from an interview that I did with him. And I gotta give him credit here because this is really, really interesting. Once you build muscle, it's A, easier to maintain it, but it's also easier to build it back when you lose it, okay? And I'll explain to you what he explained to me. He gave me a great analogy. Basically, you have to think of your muscles like a department store, okay? And this department store starts out as just a really small store that maybe just has one manager. Okay, that's when your muscle is small. But as your muscle gets bigger and bigger and bigger, that one manager, man, he's having a hard time running that department store. He's really having a tough time because he's trying to scale and open other stores and he can't do it by himself. So he hires more managers. This is what sort of happens at a muscular level too. We start bringing in these satellite cells or we're recruiting satellite cells, we're recruiting other cells to help facilitate and control like the muscle to be larger. So the muscle has essentially developed the infrastructure or more managers to be able to maintain, uh, handle it at a larger size. And it can keep going and going and going, adding more managers and more managers and more managers as the muscle gets bigger. Now let's pretend that the muscle shrinks. You go through a period of time where you shrink and you, you're doing something, you're just so upset about it because like, I'm losing my gains, I'm losing my gains, I'm losing my gains. Okay. If you've been holding on to that muscle for a while, those managers aren't going anywhere. They're not leaving, okay? They're staying there even though the muscle got small. So what that means is that you have the infrastructure to build muscle and be prepared for your muscle to get large again because you don't lose those managers. You hire those managers and they're tenured and they can't go anywhere. So then as you like start training heavier again, it's easier metabolically, it's easier genetically, epigenetically, however you wanna mention it, to get bigger again. So I don't want you to freak out if you do lose size. However, this does get harder as you get older because muscle protein synthesis decreases. So it's just something to keep in mind to let you relax a little bit, that as long as your intensity is high and you just work on maintaining, you're gonna be fine. The last thing that I wanna leave you with in this is that it really becomes important to have good vascularization. So cardio is not going to be your enemy when it comes to maintaining, okay? You have to think, you have all these canals of blood vessels and capillaries that are delivering nutrients and stimulating muscle protein synthesis when protein is in the mix, okay? Higher repetitions and cardio is going to increase capillarization. It's gonna increase vascularization into the nooks and crannies of your muscles, making it potentially easier for you to build muscle. There's even evidence that shows that cardio can support muscle building. So the last thing you really wanna do when you're trying to maintain your mass is reduce your cardio. Keep your cardio where it's at or increase it, but just make sure that it does not interfere with the intensity in which you train because that is gonna be what matters the most. As always, I'll see you tomorrow.